Hi everyone, welcome to Worst Date Ever. It's a Thursday, it's 8pm, I'm excited to be here. Are you here? Send me a comment. What are you up to? Hello Michael, how are you? Hope you're alright today. What, let me know what you're up to. What's going on? Has anybody been on any crappy dates this week? They want to get on board and allow me and my guests to give our well-versed feedback on. Um, I want to say thank you to the people that contributed um, to the stream so far. Thanks, Michael, for your kind donations this month. <laughs> I think Michael is genuinely my, sh my sugar daddy at the moment, just without the sex stuff. Um, so thanks, Michael. Thank you very much. Um, coming up on the show, we've got, we're going to the other side of the pond. We've got Sophia Alexandra on the show. She's first up. And then uh, good old friend, uh, not good old friend, like good old friend, more like sort of like old friend that goes back time. Gronya Maguire is coming up as well. Um, and I'm excited. I'm super excited. If you want to support the stream and help me pay for Callum, the producer, so I don't have to um, do anything illegal or questionable, although I would in order to keep talking to you on a weekly basis, then feel free to give me money. Give me money to support the stream at paypal.me forward slash Eleanor Conway. Like every bit of money helps. Like I am zero working at the moment. I'm doing this. I'm losing money i want to keep you guys entertained with filthy dick jokes uh, is i feel like it is my duty i genuinely feel like it is my calling in life to give you dick updates on a thursday at eight that's it that's what my calling in life uh don't forget to watch you can watch this monday and thursdays 8 p.m gmt time hello jessica how are you i hope you're well uh shall we welcome my first guest onto the stream tonight Right, let's try and do it. She's all the way in Los Angeles. I'm going to bring her on. It's her time to show. Well, not her time to show. She's got way more <laughs> better stuff going on than being on a Thursday night stream. But she's like, if you want to give some hearts to show your appreciation, I'd love that. Give her a bit of love. Hello, Jaffa. How are you? It's Sophia Alexandra. How are you? Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, mate, no it's my pleasure. It's so much nicer being brought up by a British person because I've never heard my name being like said, like Sophia Alexandra. And I immediately was like, okay, my titty <laughs> grew a size. What happened? This feels great. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for having me. No, my pleasure. I was just looking, I was looking at your website and um, congratulations on your debut album, Father's Day being released, but how has the pandemic affected it? Is it good or is it bad? I mean, I don't know. It's like having a dad is a minor tragedy compared to what's happening in, <laughs> in America right now. You know, not having a dad is not that big a deal comparatively. So, uh, yeah, honestly, I wanted to release it on Father's Day because growing up without a dad, it was like a really shitty holiday. So I was like, you know, I want to do something that would like make it a fun one for like dadless people. And okay. now that seems like it was a million years ago. It was three months ago that I released it. Do you know what? I should have looked at what um, the bio of the of the album before just going, how did you feel about your debut special? <laughs> <laughs> I was too worried no, about it. No, you're fine. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was like, uh, I'll just look like I've done a little, like I've done some research. <laughs> and then I'm, and you're just like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. I did no, not no, look no, you please i'm the worst at, at advertising my own fucking album i'm like it's too sad to for anyone to listen to my album right now no my album is great please buy it yeah totally well, uh, yeah i'm sure people can buy it on your yeah or like on the yeah iTunes they're not the giving you that money you know what i'm saying because i'm not trying to take money from you from the from the mouths of babes mate from the mouths of babes mm -hmm. but I, I feel fortunate there's a welfare system here so we're, you know i'm okay i'm not homeless yet Okay, you don't need to brag about your country, okay? I know, we are living in hell. I don't want to say too much because I want to get my US visa. So I don't want, I, I want I, it's in the process. I love America. I love don't America. Worry, you're white. I'll let you in. I love, I love everything about the government of America. Please let me in. I don't buy it unless you have like two guns that you're shooting at children while you're saying this. Like, boop, 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 boop. You know, that's how you're a real American. Um, so are you like, because we're about to go into a second lockdown. Um, we're going into a second lockdown and things are 
I mean, some of us haven't had sex for a long time because we've had enforced casual sex mm-hmm. lockdowns. I mean, are you, are you, like, where are you on the lockdown casual sex vibe? Are, are you even in the market for casual sex or you, have you got home sex going on? I mean, I think my husband would be a little mad if I started having casual sex. You know, uh, we have been together for quite a while. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm having home sex, you know, it's, it's nothing to brag about, you know, I think we're all just making do like, I'm I mean, glad I'm not alone. Like, oh, it's God. nice to come, you know, but it is nice to come. Don't rub it in love. How many comes until Trump is out of office? How many comes? <laughs> I don't know. I support the government. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, six to t- 10 comes a day, like between my vibrator and my man. And like, so far I haven't saved anything, you know, oh, so mate. I more comes than this. Um, so um, your worst date that you're going to talk about today, obviously it must have happened a long time ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When, yeah, when I lost my virginity to this dude and he didn't know that, that, um, well, basically, like, I tricked a man into taking my virginity, is I guess oh how God. I would put it. <laughs> Mate, if you were smart, you could have got someone to pay you for it. Like, there's a market for that. Well, this was a long time ago. This was before you could really get, like, monetize the pussy. You know, this is before <laughs> OnlyFans. This is a long time ago, you know. It was ancient times. Um, when you asked me for a worst date, I'm like, I've never really dated. I'm one of those Oh, my people- God somebody and like we fuck and like now we're together i love that phrase monetize the pussy i think monetize the pussy i think (laughs) that's the if you don't mind i'm gonna take that it's gonna be the next the title of my next hour it's like eleanor conway monetize the pussy i think i love it thank you so much making your patreon slogan go for it (laughs) (laughs) put your money in my slot no sorry um Where did you meet your husband? Where did you meet your husband? We all want one. I mean, we don't. I can live without one. It's fine. It's super, like, boring and not interesting. It's way more interesting to talk about me tricking a man into taking my virginity. Okay. Because my husband and I were, like, it's, like, a cute, it's a meet cute. Like, you're going to throw up. It's, like, oh, we went to high school together, but we weren't friends. But our mutual best friend got married after college. We both went to the wedding. And, like, we've been together ever since. It's gross. Like, I'm disgusted. And yeah, I was I'm a part dis- yeah, you are disgusting. I'm insulted. Yeah, yeah, I should probably go. I'll see you, Eleanor. No. <laughs> so um, tell me tell me about this uh, worst sex story ever, the worst day ever. Go on. So um, I'm pretty sure it probably was the worst date for him. Yeah. Because he didn't know what was happening. So I'll just set the scene a little bit. Um, I am a Russian immigrant. I moved to... Uh, America when I was 11 and my mom was like a really hardcore like Russian mom like very strict like I wasn't really allowed out of the house much like I was pretty sheltered and like the one time the one person I could have lost my virginity to was this guy I dated um towards the end of high school that I met at Baskin Robbins do you guys have Baskin Robbins (laughs) yeah okay don't laugh i don't fucking know what you have <laughs> oh no i think we have it i think we have it but i at least know what it is i definitely know what it is it's the ice cream i place, always right? your names are probably more adorable it's like probably like frozen treats and sweets <laughs> i don't know um <laughs> but uh yeah so we worked at baskin robbins and i could have lost my virginity to him but i didn't because he was an ex-con okay um, and I thought, you know, I'm only 16, but I feel like I can do better than a 21 year old ex con. What was so. he in for? What was he in for? Great question. Um, passing a fake 20 at a jack in the box Which and a, a assault with a deadly weapon. So, oh, uh, hang on. So, like, a jack in the box is a burger place, isn't it? They do good burgers. It is. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, assault was it? So hang on, patties passing... and daddies. Is that is that the British? <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, we have something called McDonald's. You may have heard of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, have you watched that thing on Net? I think it's on Netflix or Amazon. Where that you know that scam that happened in the eighties with like the scratch cards for McDonald's. <gasps> I and love was... that. Yeah. I don't, I don't. I can't remember where I saw it. I've just been on a an, on a six month like 
binge, obviously, mm-hmm. like all of us. But like, I mean, yeah, I ain't got much on that, to be honest. Uh, I just was amazed on it. <laughs> Next one. You know what? It was still fun to play. I, I love being cheated. I'm an American. <laughs> what? Um, so hang on. The assault with a, a dangerous weapon or a deadly weapon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was a. It was yeah. Assault with a deadly weapon. And you know, again, I thought I could do better. This was in Arizona. This is like classic Arizona. You know, if it was yeah. in Arizona, it would have been Florida. You know what I mean? Just like classic Arizona, Florida behavior. Um, again, I don't know how to translate that into England terms. Like what's well, your like? What's your Florida? What describe what Florida is? What what does Florida mean to you? And I'll like, and I'll and I'll translate like, it. Yeah, like here's a typical Florida headline: like woman snorts line of bath salts <laughs> and drives down the aisle of a Walmart in a wheelchair while shooting the other customers with a gun and waving around a bottle of wine. That's that, Glasgow. Glasgow. That's like One, Florida. Two. Glasgow? Okay, yeah, cool. Just, yeah. Glasgow shit right there. That's but, what I'm talking about. But but I love Glasgow because they're you just it's, it's sort of slight not slightly dangerous, but just everything's just a bit more like, ooh. Just you don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> that is not the Florida vibe. Like it's like I don't know what's gonna happen. I should leave. That's, that's uh, is it, of a vibe. Is it my brother's my brother's my dad no like my kind of my cousin's my dad type vibe no 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 you're thinking more of like alabama like kind of country that's closer to the yeah florida is like where people go to retire yes Uh, so like it's a lot of crazy old people that are really like right wing but it's also uh the opposite it's like people that party in miami and stuff so it's it's kind of a really interesting mix of people didn't they didn't florida handle the coronavirus terrible like really really yeah, really badly course. yeah they're okay. also the reason that we ended up with uh george w bush like everything bad comes from florida there's nothing good just the orange juice maybe that's it all right you gotta name one but one okay thing other than orange juice come on we got we got we got to give florida it's some good rap here warm ocean warm warm water close First to mexico swimming. Close to me- is it close to Mexico? I don't know. I'm really rubbish at geography. It's okay. Please don't ask me where I think Glasgow is. <laughs> I love the fact you've gone Glasgow, but it's, it's Glasgow. Glasgow? Yeah, Glasgow. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know about Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually very offended by that, whatever that was, Sophia. I that's, just... On that's behalf my, of my classic <laughs> English uh, Eleanor impression. I don't know. I'm so sorry. We don't get out a lot. I'm so especially now with coronavirus. (laughs) I'm so sorry, Sophia. How was that? Oh good. Oh, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. So uh, you you were like, you were like this guy with the passing the twenty in the Jack in the Box. I could do better Mm -hmm. than that. So you're not into bad boys. You've never been into bad boys. You like good boys, I guess. Well, no, I wasn't a bad boys, but like, you know how you just kind of know your worth at some point and you're like, you know what? Not this time, Satan. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still trying to assess that. I have a sponsor and she tra- <laughs> she, she really, really wants me to get that lesson. Uh, I'm like- yeah, I think not today, Satan is a powerful dating lesson to, to learn. Um, and then so I was like, I have to go away to college so I can like get my fuck on because I was so, so <laughs> horny and like I had not lost my virginity and I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here and go really far away. So I went to college in Washington, D.C., which was pretty far from L.A. I was like, yes, I did it. I got there and I was like, OK, um, you know, uh, like I just basically need to catch the like. Catch some dick. Train out of ta- out of town. You know what I mean. I'm like I, <laughs> I need to lose my virginity as soon as possible. And I wasn't one of those women that was like, oh, like I want to lose it to like the person I love, with like candles and rose petals, and we're gonna remember this forever. Um, because I'm a broken person, so I didn't want that. Um, what I wanted was like the first time to be with like a throwaway, you know? Because I was yeah. like, I'm gonna be terrible at sex the first time. So I don't want to like ruin my sex rep with someone I care about. I'd rather like get the first one out the way, bang it out, you know, get some 
get some tips and tricks. <laughs> and then for the next person who really matters, I wouldn't suck. I love that. I love just get your bang on. I love the fact that you uh, you wanted you, you wanted to sort of take some tips and tricks of a fellow like young person who, who probably didn't know much either. But, I, you know, well, I just was like, I don't want to fall apart, you know, the first time with somebody that I like. So I was like, I'll just do this with someone that I, I really I, I don't have feelings for. And so my criteria were for like the person that was going to take my virginity. I was like, one, I was really into punk rock at the time. So I was like, he, uh, like, okay, one, he has to be hot, obviously, because I'm shallow. And then two, he has to have a mohawk. And then three, um, he has to not be in like any of my classes. Because okay. like, I don't want to see his face again after we do the throwaway. Like if I don't have to, you know, it should be on my terms. 100%. So I found the perfect guy. His name was Tyler or Trevor. Um, and he had a mohawk. He was very cute. Yeah. He had like, you know, the the jean vet, like vest with the ripped off arms and like all the patches and buttons. And I was like, ooh, my, be still my heart, you know? Uh, I was like, my vagina just like, I just slid to class from my dorm. You know, how is this possible? So I was just really excited to lose my virginity to Tyler or Trevor. And then I knew <laughs> how I would do it too. I was like, okay, cool. So we were at the same party. And then I like made sure that we were like kind of the last people at the party. And um, then- so he, so he had to fuck you basically. No, 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 no. Cause he's like a gentleman and not an animal like me. He was like, oh, uh, do you want me to walk you to your dorm? And I was like, oh, that's so weird. Like, I hadn't considered it, but like, yes. Sure. And then he walked me to my dorm. And then I was like, oh, no, I don't have my student ID to get in. And it's after 2 a.m. So there's no RA on duty. Oh, I guess I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> oh, and my God. Like, oh, do you want to crash at my place? And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even consider like crash at your place. Yes. <laughs> so basically, so, you you guilted a guy into fucking you. I love it. Pretty much, not guilted, but I mean, look, it's not like I was ugly or anything. And you're still not ugly. You're a beautiful woman. Thank you so much. Uh, I do have like a cleaning woman vibe today, but it's fine. Uh, so anyway, we got to his dorm. Yeah. And the reason I fuck at his dorm is because I had two roommates, and both of them were into like really like completely turn off stuff like the counting crows imagine <laughs> all the pictures around you were of adam Duritz and his ridiculous hair and just like my other roommate was into sailor moon and their giant eyes are like staring at you i was like i do not want to have sex to that so i was wanting to have sex in his dorm where everybody had their own room because it was a dorm for artists slash mentally ill people <laughs> which so, is very much my vibe and so um and so things start moving at what point did he realize that you, he was taking your virginity and he, 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 that was a surprise to him he never knew that that happened um he was like I she's in, she's incredibly good at this <laughs> no i made this face excellent the entire time because no one fucking told me how bad it would hurt everyone was like oh Sophia like if you've ever had a supersized tampon inside you you'll be fine and I'm like bitch I've had two supersized tampons inside me not the same not the same it hurts so fucking bad so yeah you know he's fucking me and I'm just doing this face because it hurts so much and then I'm listening oh my god I am losing my virginity to the vandals song ape drape which is a song about I mullets that, i don't know what that is it's too rocky for me mate i was you know what mullets are i do i fucked a man with a mullet a couple of weeks ago but it was a hipster mullet so it was fine this is a song about all the different names for ape like for the mullet regionally ape drape hockey hair all of that that's what i'm getting fucked to for my first time that what's is the what's the tempo of that 
<laughs> it is a three minute song let's put it that way all the good punk rock ones are is a punk so, rock like quite quick it's like i've got an ape drape yes i do that's about the tempo okay i don't sing anymore because we don't want to get flagged for copyright because that was such an on-point song like r- oh rendition. Yeah, so thank just, you thank you yeah i know um sometimes i pretend that i'm in the band and they can't even tell the difference you know what i mean <laughs> They're like, she really nailed that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Ape Drape is what happened. It hurt very much. And um, then during it, he says like the most romantic thing a guy could say to a girl when he's like cupping like your face in his hands. And he's like, so are you going to come? Oh. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. And um, I said the dumbest thing that I've ever said in my whole life. And honestly, that's hard to do. I said, oh, no, I don't do that. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) What? That is literally all I do. I moved to 2,500 miles away to come. And then when time (laughs) came down, I was so freaked out. I was like, uh, pleasure? Oh, none for me, thanks. (laughs) And then, so did you see him again? Was that it? The next morning, done. Or did you leave that night? No- you didn't leave that night. No- you stayed over, right? Did you have I some more? over. He made me uh, top ramen, like a nice. three minute soup. And I was like, oh my God, this is so romantic. Um, and then he poured me a little shot of NyQuil. And I was like, what's this about? And he's like, oh, there's construction that starts outside in about 30 minutes. So the only way I sleep is by taking NyQuil. I was like, he gave me a shot of NyQuil and she made me a soup. What a keeper. This is truly, wow, the boiler maker of love. You know what I mean? Beautiful. <laughs> and yes, I did see him again, not in a date capacity, oh, uh, no. just around. And um, I was glad that he was the throwaway because like I said, what I did was horrible. Are you still there? Are you still there? Yeah, 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 I'm here. You're, I thought you just froze there. Um, I thought you just froze there. But hang on, you didn't, you did, you saw him again, but you didn't, not in a sexual, what was the sec, What was the way that you saw him again? Well, we never fucked. It was just like, I saw him around campus, not in class, thank God, but just like around. around. Did he ever yeah. kind of look at you and be like, or was it? I think it was such a horrible experience for him (laughs) that I do not think that he looked at me in any way like, hey, Wink, we did this together. (laughs) I think he was like, can we forget the nightmare that happened on my dick that day? (laughs) Oh, no. Well, you know, I'm assuming, you you know, you've been with someone for a long time now. I'm assuming it's gotten a bit better over the years and you are now a master. Um, I am a beast. I am incredible in the sack truly like the men that I've had sex with since I know like they still think about me and jerk off and are like oh man hang on how do you even know that information are you serious or they tell you don't you ever get those dms that you're like what this is from 10 years ago and dudes be like coming out of a hole to just like check up on you um, yeah, I did get I did get a call about eleven thirty last night from somebody that I have. He used to be he used to be my clit licker. He used to come around and lick my clit. Um, but just the clit? In. Yeah, just he just come around and do that bit. Um, um, and then he moved away. But he's been back in London and he t- and he called me at half eleven last night. And I was just like, oh. I also I haven't seen him in a while, so I'm a bit worried. I'm like, do I even fancy him still? It's a bit of a risk, isn't it? Someone that you haven't seen for a while, inviting him around. Do you know what I mean? I don't want him to stay over either. And also, I know he lives with like a bunch of other people in a house share. And I'm just like, I'm all right for Corona right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think it's advisable to go to a place with like six dudes who don't ever know anything about hygiene. That's the only way that six dudes live together. So it's just like, you don't want any of that mess. You're going to get into that bathroom and their like rug is made out of like pubic hair and old cum it's well just- they, they they would have come right like he would have come around mine but like i don't know where he's been and i've not seen him in a while so like and also it's 11 30 like it's 11 30 at night that's a late that's a late booty call that's not like come around for an hour and fuck off again that's come around for an hour and sleep in my bed all night 
Yeah, that's disrespectful. Thank you. Well, Either yeah. Either ask earlier or like just be like, it's a pop in. A pop in, a, a drop, in. like a like a drop in appointment, like just in a like I'm not a walk in center, like a drive by clit licking. Oh no, it's fine. I, I think I'd like to, you know. I think it doesn't have to just be the clit licking now. I think we can. Oh, okay, grab- so you've expanded the repertoire. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm op- I'm open to a bit more intimacy. Okay, now. so like not just the clit. Like you'll let him eat your ass, or I'm not really into RC in because I I don't like kissing him afterwards because I just get a bit grossed out by my own bum hole. Of course, <laughs> anybody's <laughs> bum hole, really. Do you do you like do, does your husband eat your ass often? I'm not really a big uh, fan of that either. Yeah, me I mean, neither. Like, I I eat a lot of beets. Like I don't beetroots. I think the point. You know, he like you... all his mouth is all rigged with purple. I don't. Who needs it? I know. I I don't like. I'm, I've been speaking to a lot of bo- like men recently about how they clean their asshole, and I think men clean their asshole a bit. Like I've got a few friends that will use wet wipes when they go for a poo, and then. I, I've spoken to other men that when they go for a poo, they'll just get naked and go for a poo. And then they might have a shower afterwards. I, I've never heard what of any... Mean? I don't know. They just they just shower after their poo. It's weird, isn't it? But do they wash their butthole then? I would... Yeah, I think that's why they do... <laughs> well, they just have a shower and just avoid the butthole. Well, it just seems like... Have you ha- seen the thing... It, it's like been online where men post how like the like this woman posted that she found out her husband doesn't wipe his butthole uh, <laughs> by the smell because he's been he was taught that it's gay. <laughs> I'm serious. Straight men are crazy. They've do you, been hurt so much by the patriarchy. Um, do you, like I I don't think I overly scrub my bum hole. Like some uh, you don't I need to scrub it, but it's weird if you think it's gay to touch your own butthole. Like, in t- yes, I, I don't think it's gay to touch your own bum hole. And anyone that's also, watching there's this... there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am bi. I am very gay for my own butthole. But I just want to <laughs> be clear <laughs> that I don't think that it's gay for you to clean your butt. And even if it was, it wouldn't matter. Right? Exactly. <laughs> But also clean your butthole. Do you, what is do you, happening? Do you clean your butthole or do you just let the water trickle down with the soap and just hope no, that it cleans No, trickle itself? down economics doesn't work, whether it's for money <laughs> or Cap- shower water. Whether it's for capitalism or assholes. <laughs> it does not. See, you guys thought not. you were just just tuning in for like, like pussy chat but you got some like economical stuff as well you got economics lesson as well from me and sophia so we're serving knowledge i mean in addition to that amazing geography bit we did earlier where oh. i told everyone i know exactly where glasgow is <laughs> glasgow Gla- no glasgow glasgow just say glasgow. it after me <laughs> that's that's brilliant that's brilliant. I'm sorry, Glasgow sounds like you're saying to me, it's a company and they make glass. Like glass company, Glasgow. <laughs> That's what it sounds like you're saying. So I can't take that seriously. <laughs> but why did, no, but like, no, but you would say glass. See that American accent there? No, I know, but it sounds like you're trying to say it in, in English. In but British. why would I? <laughs> we invented it. We're talking about. I mean, okay. <laughs> okay. We've made all the best modifications, let's be honest. Where were you when Bay happened? Okay. I mean, I'm a middle aged woman. There is no reason I should be saying Bay on any. I mean, I have done, <laughs> I have done before, but I didn't like myself afterwards. <laughs> Did you wash your butthole? Did you do a whole shower? <laughs> no, I, I just let the soap trickle down like I always do. <laughs> <laughs> but since I've been talking about bum holes, I've definitely been giving it more of a like clean. So anybody that's thinking about getting close to my bum hole, I just want you to know it's cleaner now than it was three months ago. Do you wax? I no, I'm cheap. So I um I am Mac. Do you have that? That V that what is V that? So it's the white cream you put on your pussy and then you leave it on for seven minutes and then when your but skin you can't put it on your butthole. Oh no, I'm not trying to. I haven't got a crazy hairy butthole. Also, 
Do you, it's not about it being crazy hairy. I'm just saying when I get waxed, I do the whole Monty, the full Monty. Yeah, British. Um, <laughs> hey, British. <laughs> Seriously. So right. if, you're, if you're getting your pussy waxed, you got to do the butthole because it's actually the least painful part of the process. And it's real nice to feel so smooth. Ah. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm poor and broke now. I mean, I was always mm. poor and broke, but well, now this I'm a- is pre-corona. Now it's like a forest down there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 How are you making money at the moment? Um, I have podcasting and uh, my tears. No, I sell them <laughs> for sales. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a personal question. We've not even met in real person. I'm like, no, no, no. How- it's not that. No. Where are you getting your money That's from? All we care about. <laughs> I would have started an OnlyFans if I didn't already have like a serious corona body going, but um i yeah podcasting and i run a a zoom show every two weeks okay coping mechanism so what okay i need this this is a separate chat this is very boring for people that watch it this Mm -hmm. is very this is super interesting to me shop talk (laughs) shop talk um Look, um, Grania's waiting, um, and I feel like I need to let you go and have some lunch or brunch or breakfast. It's uh, lunchtime, yeah. Yeah, mate. Um, thanks so much. Where can people find you on the uh, internet? I'm at the Sophia, S-O-F-I-Y-A, on Twitter and Instagram. You can find my podcast about love and sex around the world. It's called Private Parts Unknown. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for zooming in from America. Ooh, foreign, international. <laughs> Thanks for letting me uh, talk butts with you. So you know which you know which part of the fucking stream's getting clipped. It's going to be the butthole <laughs> chat. It's yeah, no it's, shit. It's what the people want. It was what the people would want. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much, you. Sophia. That's everyone. That's Sophia. She's off now. She's bye, bye, bye. She can, nobody can see her now. Um, thank you so much, Sophia, for coming on. Someone's got their microphone on. If they wouldn't mind switching it off, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Um, thank you so much to all the people that have contributed and for the people that continue to work, like continue to like watch the stream on Instagram. Um, feel free to drop something in the comments um, and let me know what you think and um, just what you're up to at the moment but also keep it clean ish um if you'd like to support the stream and help me pay for callum and um not have a heartbreak or uh, uh, um, uh, like a breakdown uh, feel free to drop me a donation paypal.me forward slash eleanor conway and tell your friends about this wonderful stream okay right let's bring on our second guest i've known her for a very very long time her name is gronya Maguire. Hello! How okay, are so you? Like a boudoir look. So I'm wearing and, like a hat and um, a floaty nightgown. Are you in bed, mate? Yeah. That's what right. A sexy... We're two sexy gals. I thought this was quite like sex in the city. It is quite sex in the city. Have you got a fan on in the background or something? No. Huh, wait. No. Um, it's, how are you? How are you doing? Are you in, are you genuinely in bed? I'm genuinely in bed. I thought this is like a sexy boudoir show, and I live in a three room flat, so options were limited. It was either here or the toilet, and I respect you too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, do you clean your asshole? Very? Do you, were you listening to that previous chat? How? What? Do you have like any particular cleaning asshole? I mean decadence i'm sorry when you're worried about the the smoothness of your arsehole it's time to check in <laughs> that's what, that, when isis finally do destroy the west that'll be the thing that tipped them over the edge what well, women worry. women talking about their arseholes <laughs> i'm i'm a big fan of big let's reclaim big hairy arseholes 100 i'm all aboard big, with it hairy arseholes that's what um, we need more of so you are you are living in a flat with your long term beau or yeah. bae. Um, that's that's that's. that's uh, you're like I feel like you're one of the single people that have left me a little bit. Oh no, no, no! That came out wrong. Like I'm happy for your I'm happy for your union and I'm happy for your love. But you have like you've left me. Like everyone else, everyone's left me and I'm still single. So, like, you've known me for a long time. What do you think I'm doing wrong? 
Um, oh, wise one. Doing wrong. Let me think. I think that you hang around with too many comedy people and that you need more just like healthy men who are not involved in the entertainment industry. Okay. I mean, but they're, but they're, they're, I mean, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but how will they help my career, Gronya? They won't. No, I'm joking. They'll I'm joking. Material. They'll give you the material. That's how they'll help you. <laughs> so you're you're not dating a comic. Is there a definite difference between dating a comic and uh, dating somebody with an actual real job with actual just? Um... I mean, well, I've, said, I've never really dated a comedian. I just more like shagged and then stalked online. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, um... it's never as romantic as boyfriend girlfriend. <laughs> Well, that's it. I mean, if you look back at your earlier date in life, what mistakes do you think you have you made back in the day, or, or what what do you think stood in your way of finding true love or finding a relationship and something healthy? I think my question was never like, "Will this person make me happy?" It was like, "What would be the f- the funniest thing I could do next?" And in the autobiography of my life, what would cause the most drama? And then I do that. <laughs> Fuck, like, such as what? Like, just, like, go after fucking arseholes. Like, absolute mental men. But I'd just be like, oh, but what if? You know, because, like, happy relationships are, you know, they're, they're not boring, but they're predictable in a way. But if somebody's completely nuts, then it's quite exciting because you don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah, I know. What you, I know what you mean about the drama. I do. I do love a drama. See, I'm. A, I'm. A, so you're quite emotionally in a good place, and I think I would suggest. I would say that you are. Look at my hat, Eleanor. I'm wearing a hat in bed. <laughs> and you have someone that will fuck you. So you know that is a win. With probably with. Well, a hat I on don't the... know. Like at this stage of lockdown, because I, I think I used to be like I was only ever in about two nights a week in the old days. Now he's getting a lot. Of Grolly Maguire FaceTime. <laughs> are you like doing like, hey, so uh, I wanted to, but are you just like trying to eat his breakfast and you're just trying to do material? It's so funny. I had a really bad gig last night and I was feeling really sorry for myself. And I came in and I, I gave an example of one of the jokes I said that they didn't laugh at. And he just was like, uh, sorry, I don't get it. And I just walked <laughs> out of the room. <laughs> I just I'm sorry. I just... I just don't get it. Do you think you're getting? Do you think you're getting worse and worse at comedy because you haven't gigged so much in the six months? Well, no, I don't know what have you done ever since the new restrictions. I did a gig last night, Eleanor, where the audience were all wearing face masks. <laughs> it was genuinely like a fever dream. It had all the atmosphere of the reading of a will. It was so. <laughs> oh, hard. oh my god Fuck. oh my god it was really 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 tough work mate I like <laughs> I've just lost yeah. my train of thought I've just lost my train of thought I where know, was it I know <laughs> so hang on you are emo- I think you are emotionally in a good place now yeah and I can't remember what the follow-up question, it was going to be something really like excavating and really deep. But we just started talking about stand-up. <laughs> and then we just fucking went into stand-up chat. Um, ah, fuck, I can't remember. Okay, I, so I used to be attracted to drama and then I realised, this is what I realised, I realised that I thought I could have like three quarters of my life fine and then a quarter of my life, the romance bit, that could be fucked up, but it was fine. So I thought I could like compartmentalize. And I didn't realize is if one big area of your life is fucked up, it contaminates everything else. So that's why I was like, I have to get, have to have healthier relationships. Otherwise the rest of my life, you know, no we'll matter how hard I work, will be fucked up too. So how did you unfuck that relationship without, like, just what were the basic lessons that you implemented or the basic steps that you implemented in layman's terms? <laughs> so, um, thinking why, instead of being like, oh, 
all oh, these terrible men and I'm such an innocent and why are these men so cruel to me when I'm so lovely? And um, I, I thought, well, what am I getting out of this? Why am I attracted to all these awful men? Maybe they're not awful. Maybe I'm just as mad as they are. So recognizing what the payoff I was getting from all this drama and mm. figuring that out. So I, then, I, go on. Sorry. No, go on. Well, just, and then like, but my first day back, my first day back, but being like, what, like I really put all this work in and it wasn't like it was just like magic. Then I was only attracted to nice people. I still was attracted to our souls, but just <laughs> fucking like, just having a bit of common sense. <laughs> just being like, I don't think this is a good idea. Fuck. Are you like, so, uh, did you, cause I did a pe- period of celibacy just to sort of level stuff out. Did you do one of those or did you just try yeah. and sort it? You did. Yeah. I, th- I think it's really good actually. Cause it sort of cleanses the palate bit and you stop being like, you stop grabbing mental blokes and allowing them to treat you like a little bit of shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it. So, um, I've, so I've been celibate for a bit and then I, da- I went on a fetish app called field. Ooh. And I've been having some really good conversations with men who are just sort of being honest about what they want before I meet them. Like, it's not like I'm meeting them first and I broke my famine. I broke my drought the other week with a guy with a mullet and that was fine. Uh, but, but like it, mullets, the 1980s. Yeah, like, but he's like a hipster mullet and he's, he was, yeah, like a hipster mullet. And that was fine. Um, but I've got another date on Tuesday uh, with a chef. Um but I wonder if I should be should is you like should I be doing that or am I just being unhealthy and just trying to find something to act like activate my mind? I mean, it's not like I think working on yourself. The it, the the dream isn't celibacy. That isn't what you should be aiming for. The dream is like being part of the world and going out with people, but it just being a fun thing rather than self destructive. So it's you know as long as you're looking after yourself, you know. Well, it's good. Well, I've, I've, I've been honest and I'm going to say, like, I am looking for a relationship, but I, I also don't want to be celibate while I'm looking for that relationship because I just think God gave me this. I need to. It's a superpower. It's a fucking gift. I need to use it. Spread the love. <laughs> but, but this is my question for you. Can you use this if the governor is in charge? What does that even mean, mate? <laughs> As in, like, the governor. My pussy. I get it. Jenny. Yeah. If she's making the decisions, sometimes you have to let the boring bit make decisions as well. Yeah, but I, I, I'm just bored of not having sexual connection with people. That's that's what it is. I'm just a bit bored of it because I've had like a year and then another year and then I'm just like, oh, I'm over it. Also, I just feel like not having sex is sort of a little bit unhealthy as well. Do you know what I mean? We kind of go, oh, I'm not going to have anything. I'm going to like not do it. And then you do it and, you know, and you feel bad or whatever. But um, so I'm just going to be honest and say I'm looking for a relationship, but along the way, I do want to have like connective sex. But when I have that connective sex, the relationship can't be off the table. Do you know what I mean? There needs to be a possibility that that will happen. So that's what I've said to them. That's 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 my that's my vibe. That's That's good. So obviously, before you met your lovely man, um, you had a worst date. Yes. This stream is called Worst Date Ever. Grania Maguire, yeah. can you give me your worst date ever? Okay. So I was on Twitter. There was this journalist and he was flourishing with me and he was liking all my tweets. And then he was sending me DMs. And we we're DMing, DMing, DMing. I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. And at the time, he was my dream boy. He was a journalist. He was a Tory. And let's not, there was a period when I did have a soft spot for my center right bad boys. <laughs> what do you like about a Tory, Gronya? Uh, okay, that- so I'm better, I'm better now. I'm better now. <laughs> was that your pussy or your mind? Oh, that was the pussy. That was the governor. <laughs> the pussy loves a Tory. I'm not going to lie. She does. She does. <laughs> my pussy leans to the right. <laughs> we. Oui. I think it's like just their arrogance and their confidence, and they're like, "Oh, I just find it really sexy." And like, yeah, we're, we're gonna fuck the poor fucker. Like, oh, fuck it. Let's just enjoy ourselves. 
uh, oh, you don't have to worry about all that sort of thing. Let's just have a drink and, you know, you know, do loads of coke or whatever. Do you know what's that sort of like? There's a real, ugh, and it's so English. And I think as a as a foreigner, there's something like, you know, like super English about it that I'm like, oh, I shouldn't, but I can't resist. It's just you know, a bit like, posh, isn't it? It's a bit of a posh, bit of posh. Yeah. So I so I was feeling very getting good vibes off this guy, and at the time he was living in. I think he was in Australia at something at the time but he was like I can't wait back wait to come back to London we can meet up and I honestly in my head I was fantasizing I was like oh my god genuinely in my head I thought we're gonna have a photo shoot in the Sunday Times I could just picture it I definitely could picture it because I was like she's the left-wing comedian he's the conservative journalist of the day and then we'd just be like this and I'd be like Oh, he's conservative, but he's not really. And, you know, he'd pay for our house, but I'd be like, help the poor. So I was feeling, I was so, I just was so excited. And then he messaged me. He said, oh, back in London next week, are you free at 11 o'clock um, to go to the Soho house? 11, 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh. And I was like, I was like, Okay, I was like, oh, that's fine. Like, um, you know, like maybe during the day, maybe that's even more romantic because, you know, we're not going to like get drunk. And I was like, he, wa- yeah. he, wa- he wants to get to know you, Gronya. He wants to get to know me. And also, I love the way that one tweet led to you fantasizing about a double, sp- double page spread in the Sunday Times. I absolutely yeah, love that. I thought maybe he'll be friends with Michael Portillo. Mm. We'll call around for dinner. Ed Miliband. Really? No, he's Labour, isn't he? Is he yeah, Labour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, oh, I, I don't know. Ed Miliband. I defend and They'd be like, oh, Grogna, you're too soft. And I'd be like, I am adorable. Um, <laughs> then I was really looking forward to this date. Really looking forward to it. I was like, I'm going to go for brunch. I, I took the rest of the day off. I was like, I have to block out the whole day off. And then at the time, we were kind of talking about like politics and everything in our DMs. And I was like, that's cool. That's normal. And then... It was only at the day of our date, he said, oh, and so-and-so, he mentioned this other journalist, they're going to be there as well, and then so-and-so is going to be there as well. So, um, yeah, if you, could, if you could get your points about Brexit, sort of as concise as possible, that would be great. What? And then I realised he wasn't asking me for a date at Soho House. He was asking me for a talk about Brexit at Soho House. So I arrived expecting a date and there was like three chairs up in a corner of the Soho House breakfast bar. Um, were you prepared? I'm guessing you weren't prepared. Did you have to go and scurry away and get fucking prepared on your notes of Brexit and all that shit? I just, I mean, I just did- was like sat on this high stool just going... Yeah, like it's going to be bad, I think. <laughs> but not as bad as it's as we think it's going to get. It's going to get even but worse. Who would have known? I kept trying to like kind of, I thought, keep it flirty. Maybe we're going to go for lunch afterwards. So I kept trying to like make eye contact with them afterwards. Anyway. This, uh, hang on. Hang on. Did, did, you, did you do very well in the talk or did, had he just totally Listen. fucked you up? Because you, you're Listen. not prepared. I mean, I can do that shit in my sleep. Could do it in my sleep. So then, we, I, there were still vibes, there were still vibes. Afterwards, he was like, oh, I'd really like to take you for that drink. I'd le- really like to take you for that drink. I was like, cool, 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 yes, yes, yes. Back in the game, back in the game. And then, for the next few months, I kept getting text messages from him at about, like, 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday. Just being like, oh, you out, you out, what are you up to? Are you out, are you out? And I just thought, oh, my God, like, He's texting me like I'm obviously on his mind. And if it's like even that late on a Saturday and he's still thinking about me, oh my God, he must really, really like me. And then I would usually be gigging and he'd be like, oh, but why don't you come after? And blah. and he was like being quite persistent. And I was like, oh my God, he really he likes you. He wants me. And then like the start, no, the end of September, I go on Twitter and I see his name is trending. And it turns out his name is trending because he's been exposed 
as an actual sex pest. But he hadn't pested you? Well, no, he had. But I, all these people were like, oh, he kept harassing me and he wouldn't take no for an answer. Ah. And I was like, yeah, like, because he really likes you. <laughs> and it so turned out, no, he was just a sex yeah. pest. So do you think, like, so looking back, if you could, t- like, is there something in women that we, wa- like, I think this, I think the old us or the sort of, hang on, I want to get this right. I think we, I think we need to decide whether we want to be chased or not chased. Mm-mm-mm. Or it needs, do you know what I mean? I feel, oh, uh, this is coming out wrong. I think in the olden I'll times. I'll be honest, all the texting and all the, it was so fun. And I found it so like, obviously if I knew he'd be doing that to like, tens of other women as well yeah that wasn't so cool but it's tricky because the rest was really fun and i think there's a lot you know i don't know it's tricky as well so hang on so you are you are i think you're a feminist you're a feminist aren't you you like you're yeah, more, yeah you know about feminist shit and that um but like do you think do you think we should expect to be chased as a man of like should we have that romantic dynamic where men chase women until they finally give up and say oh okay then i don't i think everybody wants to feel like wanted and attractive and like woof and i think that's a sort of part of our animal nature and i think maybe men kind of i'm sure men maybe we're just socially conditioned that it just has to be the men who do that maybe women can do that as well and maybe the the more women are equal in our society and the more we have, you know, are as economically and, you know, in every other situation equal to men, we can still have that woof woof thing without feeling but, that, you know, but, the but, power. Of but when, when does a chase become a pester? Is it if a guy's really ugly or is it, well, like when, it, when, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. if a I guy's... Mean, Brad Pitt that, is never going to get accused of sexual harassment, is he? No, I suppose not. But like, just like your everyday, I guess for an everyday guy, it could be quite confusing, isn't it? Because, you know, the old idea is to chase a woman and to, you know, because she's, she's chaste and she's like, oh no, I can't possibly, sir. <laughs> All right, okay, I'll finally give up. But then now, I mean, really now it's, you know, that's a fine line between harassment. And I think really like we, we shouldn't, for us to do our bit we shouldn't play into that being okay like but is it like so let's say if we lived in the world where women were paid the same as men and then you know like all the you know our institutions recognize female experience i think it's because everything else is so stacked against women that we have those issues do you know what i mean like if i think it's because men have so much power that when they do that you know um flirty thing that it's got this sort of like other echoes around it and but I think if you work on all that sort of stuff then you know it's sort of yeah that you can just have the the slap and tick a little bit but right like, so like, in 50 like in 50 years time do you think it'll be a, a like men will be it'll be a social norm that men can pester 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 and you know do that no, chase me chase me chase me like, what I mean is, so let's say if we live in a world where, if a, you know, where sexual harassment is taken really seriously and rape actually does, res- you know, it isn't like basically like legal the way it is now. And women are as, you know, have um, opportunities and are supported and valued and are equally represented in all areas of life. If we're in that situation, then a man can be like, hey, I'm not, you know, I'll get you, girl, without a woman feeling threatened by it. Because it'll just be like, whoa, no, you won't. Maybe you will. It'll be more fun (laughs) because it won't be all like, oh, God, if he rapes me, he'll get away with it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. What a light note (laughs) to end the stream on. um, uh, Where can people find you at the moment, G? In my flash. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, don't chase her there. She's got a big boyfriend. He'll smash you in. Uh, are you online, Nat? I'm on Twitter. And I mainly use Instagram to follow drag queens. So I don't really do much on Instagram. But I am on Twitter. <laughs> Great. Uh, are you doing any online stuff that people can catch you at? 
not really. Um, I think this whole plague is just going to... I think it's just like Donald Trump says, it's just going to melt away, just like that. It's not going to last much longer. <laughs> My normal life is about to begin really soon, and so I haven't any plan B. No online career whatsoever, so <laughs> I'll write people letters. <laughs> Your calligraphy, you're working on your calligraphy. That's getting yeah, really yeah, good. Like, just some pen work. <laughs> um, I just want to say thanks for coming on, Gronya. Oh, it's such a brilliant show. Thank you for having me. No, my pleasure. Thank you. And um, I'll give you a call for catch-up very, very soon. Oh, bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Gronya. Gronya's off and she's going to switch her microphone off, I hope. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in to Worst Day Ever this week. I've been Eleanor Conway. If you'd like to support the stream, patreon.me, uh, no, paypal.me forward slash Eleanor Conway. And uh, all donations are gratefully received. Thank you so much for watching. We've done it slightly different this week. Let me know what you think, if you prefer it this way. Um, yeah, what else have I got to say? I'm going to be back on Monday at 8pm on Instagram, probably. Yeah, definitely on Instagram, I think. Um, but in the meantime, just, you know, feel free to share your worst states, DM me those and let me know what you think of the new format. Um, and hopefully I'll have an update on my crowdfunded porn video by then. Um, look, thank you guys for being wonderful. I will see you next time. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Worst date ever.